ladies and gentlemen, the Open Task Podcast has returned. I'm Calvin Smith. I'm with my main man, Joe Carlos. Joe, what's up, brother? Hey, man. It's great to see you. Great to be with you here on the Open Tabs podcast. Truly a great feeling. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank hey, you. Life comes at, at, at you fast, 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 fast. Uh, we've been dealing with life. Life's been dealing with us. True. Uh, and, and this is, as always, we, we always tell you guys to say labor of L-O-V-E. Love. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I had a quote, but we don't. It's out of fashion to mention what I was going to say. Oh, well. So, so I agree. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. But uh, we're back, and 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 a lot has happened, and we're not going to talk about all that stuff. We're not going to rehash the events. You 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 have probably said a million words on, on your online, you know, feed or whatever about whatever's going on. So we're not going we're not going to rehash all these old events. Instead, uh, we're going to talk about what we've been enjoying here. Lately, because uh, yeah. I called you, Joe. I called yeah, you, and I was like, "Look, man, I've been watching this show, and I had high expectations. My expectations were sky high. Mm-hmm. Sky high. That's what this is. Oh, sky that's high. what it's it it <laughs> <laughs> and, and and Joe, my expectations were exceeded, far exceeded by the great David Simon, based on source material. Uh, Justin, uh, Justin, Justin Milton." Is that a name? Justin? Sure. Justin somebody or the other. <laughs> sure. I, did, yeah. I promise I did my research, man. Um, but, I believe you. I believe you. Um, yeah, we've been captivated by this television show on HBO on Mondays. Truly captivated. Truly Mondays. captivated. Mondays. Um, Justin Fenton is his name, and he's the author of uh, We Own This City, a true story of crime, cops, and corruption. Uh, the adaptation currently ongoing on HBO, uh, up to episode three now of six. Um, just incredible. I mean, like, I feel like I, you know, I mean, I'm only six steps. steps. It's only six steps, man. Now I'm really hot. Now I'm yeah. really hot. Yeah, I know. I know. But, you know, he, David Simon don't waste no time and he don't miss no words. You know, I mean, the corner was four. Um, These need to be two hour eps then, bro. It's, it, I, 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 yeah. I, okay. Yeah. Curious yeah. how we're gonna wrap this up in three ooh, in three hours. Man. All right. So so for those that are unaware, uh, we own the city again based on source material from a, a former uh, Baltimore. I mean, he might be even current Baltimore Sun reporter Justin Benson uh, about a true story. Uh, Baltimore Police Department's gun trace gun trace task force, the GTTF, uh, and uh, I was not familiar with the story. Joe, were you familiar with the story going in? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, did not know about it. I, I figured they were going to uh, cover Freddie Gray stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, was just from what I could see and gather uh, from the commercials and everything like that leading up to it. But uh, right. this 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 story is compelling. Uh, you know, being David Simon's a, a very loyal guy. Being the loyal guy that he is, he is uh, he's used some of our uh, our, our our friends from. From his previous shows and, and flip the script on us a little bit and put them in unfamiliar circumstances um and so you know joe what when you saw the first episode what were your initial impressions of it well i uh i didn't know what to expect i trust i trust david simon uh full stop i, I definitely trust him in baltimore i trusted him in new orleans Mm-hmm. And I was one of the few people uh, who publicly continued to enjoy Treme and um, and watched through the end. I, I, I'm sure that number just dwindled and dwindled. I don't know what we thought we were going to get. get. Yeah. Um, it was not exactly happy subject matter, and and neither is this. And so I, when I say I trust David Simon, if he's doing something, man. You know, it's like Clint Eastwood. They give him $75 million and they just get out of the way. Just let him. He may he, he uses about 35, pockets 40, and he makes a strong picture. I think yeah, David yeah. Simon knows the source material. He knows Baltimore in and out. I used to think that um, Barry Levinson was the king of Baltimore. And before that, John Waters was the king of Baltimore, um, which they were. Uh, but but the modern day, the modern day king of Baltimore. And now if we look at it, we're looking at three decades of the yep. modern day king of Baltimore uh, for the yep. last three decades. 
is David Simon. Yeah. And um, and so maybe four decades. I can't remember exactly when the corner. Um, there was one before the corner, wasn't there? Homicide. Homicide. Homicide Life in the Streets. I mean, okay. So, so I knew it was going to be strong. I knew it was going to be compelling. I knew that the acting would be stellar. And I knew that it would seem as genuine as possible. Yeah. And it does. And so I am immediately entertained. The first time I'm, I watched it, the first time I watched episode one, I was uh, editing photos. So I thought I was missing things. You know, the transitions are, are when someone, obviously when they're, when they're entering the information, talking specifically, you know, entering the information in the, in the um, in obviously in the computer yeah. uh, about a case or, a or something like that. And so I thought I was missing something. Then I later realized what that was, was transition, you know, these transitions to different times. So I think my initial, and initially as well, it was, you know, my, my, uh, my, our, our dear friend's uh, wife, Wumi is, is in, is in the show. Incredible. So, yeah. She is outstanding, incredible, all those things. So, uh, and, and my friend Wumi is, is in, is in the show and I, I'm very proud of her and um she's becoming a little hbo vet you know yeah. so, so yeah. hey when you get hey when you get on the payroll baby they they gonna keep throwing it at you you know so so, so um but she's holding her own yeah. and and um it's it's uh i i perk up every time she gets on the screen and so i i my initial response i mean my initial reaction or, or, or thoughts were that david simon is in baltimore we can't lose and he's talking about life in Baltimore. He's talking about crime. He's talking about police. He's talking about living in Baltimore. He's talking about the, the fact that on either side of this coin, these people are, are humans and, um, and just trying to make it uh, mm -hmm. and try to make life better for their families. So I knew to trust this. Yeah. I, I truly knew to trust this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I, I, I think to your point, man, trust Trust in David Simon. I mean, he's in his wheelhouse. This is his thing. Yep. And uh, he's he's doing it with a plum, man. Uh, I just... Look at you, a plum. I, I did. I did. I did. Good for you. Good for you. I, I try. I try. I, I try to impress you, man. Macy Gray. I, <laughs> um, I, I just, I mean, you know, here's the thing about the David Simon approach. And what I appreciate the most is that He's not going to spend a whole lot of time doing very, uh, you know, on the nose exposition. He's not going to spend a whole lot of time uh, telling you backstory. He trusts his audience to understand and to know. He can throw you in media rest. He can switch the, the time frame on you, uh, which this, this is doing a lot with the chronology. Uh, this, this, this show is doing a lot with the chronology. Uh, you know, we have periods of 2017, 2015, 2003, 2007. Mm -hmm. They're all over the place, but right. they do it in such a way that it is not overwhelming or confusing, uh, at least for me. Uh, right. I thought it was pretty clever how, you know, uh, the first time I and, and, and I will say I've watched uh, each of the episodes more than once. Uh, but with the teletype, that's a good sign. <laughs> that's, that's a yeah, yeah, I'm telling I'm Joe, I couldn't get enough. But they, with the teletype, he'll put in our with the, uh, you know, when he's putting in his log sheets, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Putting yeah, in, I don't, I don't know. I don't know the technical term, but yeah, I'm with you. I'm yeah, with you. I, I think I made up teletype, but uh, like it. <laughs> he, he's he's putting in and, and, and that tells you the date log. That's the date line for, for mm -hmm. wherever Wayne Jenkins is when they're following Wayne. Right. Um, and so, you know, it, it's clever in that way. Uh, it has some some good callbacks. Like, you know, I listened to another podcast where they were talking about how when he clicked pertinent and non-pertinent on that one call, how they got goosebumps because it just reminded them of, of, of the wire all over again. And, and certainly I felt that, um, you know, again, to the point I was bringing up earlier about switching the roles around, uh, you know, I, I, I knew that he did that from the corner, you know, pe people that were in the corner that were drug addicts became police officers and yada, yada. So, mm -hmm. you know, this is, this is kind of his thing. Uh, but the, uh, you know, the newcomers are really what it was, was hitting for me. And there are three different newcomers, and I want your opinion on each one of them. You already kind of talked about Wumi uh, as Nicole Steele. Uh, yeah, because she, she's new to his new to his coterie of... Yeah. yeah. 
of, of uh, uh, cast members, yes. Uh, I, I, obviously, I'm gonna say the heavy hitter for, for last, but uh, your girl who plays Carolina in um, in uh, Secession, uh, um, yeah, what is her name? Uh, like Drogba, she has an Eastern European name, yes. Um, but uh, I think that you know, she's she's bringing a little something to it. I mean, it's subtle right now, uh, but you can tell they're building on something with her. Uh, but the big gun man is, is our man, John Bernthal. Man, I you know, he's another like so. Woman and, and he are like looking at the NBA about three or four years ago when you had you know Giannis wasn't quite there yet. You know what I mean? Like these young stars are are are, are, are booming, about to be there. Luca, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And and now they're they're flourishing, they're blossoming, man. And and this show is it. I really think you know. And this, what really made me think about this uh, in terms of doing the show with you about this is you posted on Facebook your uh, uh, about the other HBO show that we love and have been watching, Winning Time, yeah. and the potential for awards. And, uh, you know, uh, you had mentioned that, you know, it, it was just starting, but you were feeling that for some of these people. But I really strongly feel like this if this doesn't win major awards, McKinley Belcher is another, uh, as, as uh, 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 Mamadou uh, G Money, Gondo. Um, if, keep if going, keep going. I, I got, I got. I want, I want to say something else. Keep going, please, please keep if, going. If yes. these guys don't win awards, Josh Charles, who was that guy for me, uh, as Daniel Hurston, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, Josh uh, Charles, but he, he's 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 a vet. This is like he was born to play this role too. But I'm with you. Yeah. Keep going. Um, I, you know, I, I just uh, the, the, the young lady, uh, Carolina is is Dagmar uh, Dom uh, Dominic I mean, would be Dagmar. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, I, I mean, just these 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 new members of the David Simon Fold who just like you know hit it like a duck to water. Uh, uh, my man, uh, as somebody called him, a uh, great value ludicrous, aka uh, Daryl Britt Gibson, who I love. I, I think. Hey, look, I, 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 that's where I was. I was waiting on you to get there, um, yeah. Daryl Daryl Gibson. I thought, I think, um, he's a breakout. Yeah. I, I I think I think. We know we know what Wumi brings to the table. Um, she's been up for like uh, BAFTAs or Brit, Brit Brit. She's been up for uh, uh, major awards for her work. We know we know Bernthal is um, is a is a workhorse, yeah. and I learned that in um, oh gosh, now nah, I can't think of it. Of course, I can't think of the name of the movie. Uh, not, uh, Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I learned that in Wolf of Wall Tell Street. Me the yeah, yeah. <laughs> I learned that at Wolf of Wall Street, but, but, and he's always great, yeah. but I'm really proud of Gibson in this role because he's just like, you know, Simon, he, he, he's going to give you the, 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 the room to just go and be you and, and, and go out and, and go get it. You know, I, I'm, I'm really encouraged uh, about this young man in this role. Uh, yeah. And I, I thought he's great, but I, I agree with you on every, every, like everybody's bringing it. And the, the, the cameos, I'm, gonna, I'm calling them cameos, like the wire cameos yeah. are awesome. So I knew it was Donut. Like I knew it was Donut, right? <laughs> I'm looking like, that looks like Donut. So I stop it. I look, I look back, what's Donut's name? Then like, oh, it's Donut. Like he yeah. grew up. And it's interesting yeah. because he was interested in Morehouse for a while. He didn't apply. Oh. But he was very oh, that interested in Morehouse. Great. Yeah, he used to come to our events and in, in, uh, our Baltimore events. He was very interested in Morehouse for a while. But but um, but Donut, you know, Donut being in there is just like, huh? What? Yeah. Um, I mean, if David Simon calls, what are you gonna say no? You know, yeah. like I don't know what are you doing that you're gonna say you're gonna say no to something. So um, but yeah, I, I agree with you, man. I mean, as ensemble casts go, this is just this is just out of control. And maybe you know, six sister sitting right. Uh, but Jamie Hector is strong. I was yes. never really a fan of Marlo, but Jamie Hector is strong. I like I like seeing him in almost anything other than Marlo. I, I just yeah. do. Yeah. Um, but but he's been strong, you know. And even and of course having Delaney Williams. And I know you you mentioned it, but of course having Delaney Williams in the role, yeah. having Delaney Williams there as a wink to us. Yeah. And there's a lot of us. Yeah. Right. But having him there as a wink to us, like. Hey, look what happened. 
Look yeah. what happened to Jay. Look at old, look at old Lansman. Yeah, look at old Jay Lansman. Look at old Jay Lansman. He made it because he he had like a um, chicken doohickey. <laughs> yeah, chicken doohickey. He had he had a um, he had like a he was on an episode of Veep. Yeah, and it was so cool to see him. <laughs> Watch some Veep. We can talk about that. We can talk about that. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Brought to you by. Adam McKay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, but anyway, um, yeah, I, I was, you know, really liked that for Delaney. And there's one I was going to laugh about. Yeah, well, no, McKinley Belcher is great. You know, having Dom there, of course, you know, that, that just that just brings you on home. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah, but man. but Jermaine Crawford over my shoulder. Yeah. Uh, seeing Dookie like work is beautiful, man. Yeah. And and he's really good and I, just the two of them together yeah i mean it's obviously serious to him but he's he's right he's really is good I, and i I'm, I'm really i'm really enjoying it yeah. but i was gonna say there's one more one more person I'm just, oh oh i know what it was uh just having like gabrielle carteris there yeah hey man talk about it andrew as, as, as like a, um <laughs> I, I i mean and obviously they're playing it was it was kind of like Yates, the the uh, the uh, attorney. I, I just kind of got this feeling that the the, the former U.S. attorney. I kind of got this feeling that that uh, she was kind of based on you know just probably some left leaning, um, you know, U.S. attorney. It's Maryland. It's Baltimore. Yeah. So some left leaning U.S. attorney uh, for the uh, for for that that district, the Southern District of Maryland. Yeah. And but I thought she's I think she's great in it. And um, I'm just. I'm just really enjoying the show for the writing, for the way the story is unfolding, mm -hmm. and the fact that um, you're seeing, you're start, we're starting to see even with three episodes just how wide this thing goes. Yeah, yeah. Just how wide the corruption goes, and then the real life stuff. We're gonna get into Freddie Gray, I guess, yeah. on on Monday. So then the real life stuff comes in, so you get a better understanding, I guess of the timeline of things and how it affects yeah. just policing in Baltimore. Yeah. So here in uh, spoilers live for now, uh, cause it, to this point we haven't really told a whole lot of spoilers and, and truth be told, I'm of the philosophy that if, if this source material is real life, you know, really ain't, ain't, ain't no real such thing as spoilers for real, yeah. for real. Yeah. But I mean, you know, for the, you may want to watch some of the stuff uh, going forward because I want to talk about uh, what am I, favorite callbacks to the wire uh this guy bobby brown who i think when we talked i had mentioned that like he so he had a real small bit part at the very end of season like season five when they're uh fighting on the back lot with the police yeah. cars messed up he's like you don't yeah. leave your car like that for the next man that guy like he's that police officer uh that gets into a fist fight on the lot with another police officer at any rate like you know he's a he was a former cop much like uh like the real life jay landsman uh, and David Simon brought him on board to act in The Wire. Uh, and he plays Thomas Allers, uh, who was the, 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 the head of the GGTF, as it were. Mm -hmm. uh, and the one that brings uh, Wayne Jenkins in, the one that brings uh, Herschel in, uh, the guy like the tracksuit, really laid mm -hmm. back guy. Okay? Yeah. So, um, you know, the David Simon thing that he does so perfectly is how it circles back to how he stole that money and you think it's just kind of innocuous you think it's just police stuff you know what i mean he's stealing the money from the guy who uh you know has the the money in his in his shoe box and right. they've got the guns or whatever and you think nothing of it right and then later on they hit him with boom he owed money to to some heavy hitters and that was the money he was going to pay him back and so he is directly responsible for this man's death and to see that hit him and wash over him and to see it like it hit him and washed over and then drained out. And then he just like went back to not really giving a fuck. And all of yeah, that. But it, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. All of ahead. that, all of that emotion right then. I mean, like, and, and you could tell it, it, it affected him. I'm not saying he sure, didn't care, sure. but it was just like, man, you know, like it was like, you know, he didn't think about the long lasting effects of it, but also, you know, I mean, it's done. You know what I mean? Like it, I, that's the feeling I got from it. And uh, it just, again, that David Simon thing where he tells a story and trusts you to understand exactly. He leaves it to the actors to to say something or to not say something, like the fuck scene in The Wire. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? You don't need a whole lot of exposition. You don't need to, to explain a whole lot to an audience that's invested with you. 
that's this you know that is smart uh and and trust you like like we trust david Simon. right and and that scene right there it was like all right man i i just can't wait for the rest of this series like you know yeah. um, six episodes uh, to your point is not enough Mm-mm. uh <laughs> hopefully you know uh we get a, a a an epilogue or something or the other man and or something sparks something in david simon to come back to that world we love of the wire i don't know but um yeah man that that was my favorite moment thus far do you have a moment that just hits you like that no i think i think whenever i see wire characters or is that moment the catharsis okay. that that, okay. that these these kids because many of them were kids yeah that they've, they're grown up and and acting and 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 still trying to do um, still trying to pursue that. I, I I think that's a favorite moment for me so far. I I, I think I'd have to watch all six to to uh, you know to give a, a favorite moment. But but um, okay. if there is one, it was it's seeing Duke, seeing Dookie, yeah. see, seeing seeing Jermaine Crawford as yeah. the officer as the as the officer who goes the extra mile, who yeah. who turns in you know the the evidence, who does the does the the little things that end up being big enough to blow a case open. Real police. Yeah, real <laughs> police. Yeah, natural, <laughs> natural police. Um, I don't know if he's natural police yet, but but natural police. And it's interesting because Bernthal is not um Bernthal is not um the anti-hero yet. Yeah. You know, he is not McJimmy, he is not Jimmy McNulty, no, who is led by in the and if you think about it, Jimmy McNulty would have been a police officer at the exact same time in Baltimore city, the exact yeah. same time as these guys. Yeah. Um, but he would have been up there with Jamie, uh, with Jamie Hector's uh, characters, you know, doing work in homicides. Yeah. And it just shows you how big the city is and how many stories there are to tell. Yeah. Cause we didn't really ever. And, and if you think about it too, there's a County portion of this, there's a city portion of this, there's all these little layers yeah that that um connect you know this story so yeah uh, what, what's been your favorite part so this far i mean so that part that i mentioned about the uh about about uh allers i also yeah. really appreciated um uh, the in the in the end of uh the second episode uh Hersel in a bar uh yeah. you know filthily eating these wings licks his fingers shake and offers a handshake to 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 uh, to woo me, mm-hmm. you know, and just unflinchingly, unapologetically is 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 who he is in terms of uh, just a, a a dirty cop. Everything about him being like just this this brutal, uh, you know, like what what the police represent uh, to us at least. And and and, and you know, again, I, I I consume a lot of uh, podcasts over over the, especially if I'm having a rough week like the week I had, and. Um, you know, one of the podcasts I was listening to was just talking about how for Black folks, the police don't represent safety. You know, it's just not what we we feel. I, I, at least for me, I, 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 let me speak for myself. I don't feel safe. Uh, when I think about police officers, that's not what I think about. I don't think they are coming to make me safe. I think that they uh, may help protect me from some dangerous element, but I think they bring a, an element of danger themselves. Uh, where it's concerned for me. Hmm. And I think that, um, you know, that's what Herschel represents. He's that element of danger. Uh, he's not there to protect anybody that looks like me. Um, but he's beloved in that institution, in that, in that bar. You know what I mean? He's making jokes about, you know, the illegitimate fatherhood of one of the buddies, you know what I mean? Like all this kind of, like, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the guys there. And that's the dichotomy of America right now. It's just that, you know, like, um that like people that don't look like me feel at some attachment and kinship the thin blue line and it represents something that is 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 a a passion for them and for me that's a danger that's like all right i'm looking out for this person if they got the thin blue line this is not somebody that's for me and uh i don't i think that that david simon does uh again uh just does a really good job of, of of really showing how that that feeling can 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 come across for you know i mean like i mean she and she was very transparent and honest with him to say i'm not trying to get information to 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 build a case against you 
I just really want to understand. And he has no room to even let her understand. He, he's, nah. he, he doesn't want that to occur, does not care if that occurs or not. Because right. his agenda is, is to bust heads and, and, uh, and, 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 and make criminals suffer. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, that moment was was it for me. Uh, you know, beyond the uh, the, the the moment that came back on uh, on Allers. Yeah. But yeah, I, man. Did, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's interesting um, because the brother that play the guy that plays Allers, and I can't think of his name. And I, Bobby I, Brown. Oh, you just said it. I'm I'm sorry, Bobby Brown. Um, Bobby Brown. It seems like he should be. He should have been in the town in the in the movie The Town. He does like a Boston, like, um, like with Jim, Jim Coughlin. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, also, Don Harvey as uh, Siraki as the other um, FBI uh, agent. I, I like. I like him. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot. I, I like him too. I like him too. Yeah. I like him too. Um, the acting performances, man, they just are. It's I mean, just so good. David Simon, man. They're, they're, they're not. They're not playing around, man. They're not playing around. So. So going forward, man, you know, I'm looking for, I'm looking for more Wire alums, of course. I'm wondering, you know, I mean, I can't help myself. I, I really, you know, I want to, I want to see. I'm praying and hoping that Lester pops up in some way, shape, or form. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I mean well, he's, he's like he's not listed. I mean, you, there's IMDb for that, so he's, yeah. not, he's not listed. So, but you know, I mean, I, I just get excited when I see these guys, man, and 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 um you know, to be back in the city of Baltimore, um, it's true, authentic self. I don't think any city has been represented as well on television, at least for what it truly is. I'm not talking about like the, the mm-hmm. glimmer, the gla- uh, glitz and glamour of like, of how like Honorage, for instance, presents LA, you know what I mean? Like, I, I think that Baltimore's warts are on display, but in a way that is like, you know, well, this is a real American city. This is, and, and David Simon understands Baltimore. He understands the people of Baltimore. Um, and I mean, they're love letters to the city. And even though, you know, people might get mad about it. Like I know that Kurt Schmoke, well, not Kurt Schmoke, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, the the uh, O'Malley mm-hmm. got angry about the wire. Um, you know, Martin O'Malley. Yeah, of course. The betrayal of, of, of Carcetti. Um, you know, I think that, some people don't want to see their their close up on screen, yeah. Uh, but you know, I think that for those of us who are not natives of Baltimore, uh, we are seeing uh, a, a, a city, one of our cities, and the decline of it and the and the the malaise of it, in a way that it, it causes us to really care about what goes on there. Such to the extent that, like, when Freddie Gray happened, a lot of us were like, you know, as Wire fans were like, you know, this is. We know these cops, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, with this, we know Herc and Carver, you know what I mean? The, the, the cops that did something like this are the Herc and Carver type. The, uh, what's the guy with the bowl cut? I can't remember his name from uh, uh Tony, um, um, Collegio, 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 Collegio. 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 Yeah. yeah, like those guys, you know, we 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 know them, so yeah, man. I don't know, I'm, I'm excited, uh, I can't wait for the rest of the, the series, um. It's, it's, it's good watching, man, you know, especially my team's out in the playoffs. You know, you, you still got rooting interest here. Looks like know? we're going to seven. Yeah, 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 I see, I see. I, I lost my <laughs> argument with uh, John Richards, um, who, who surprisingly is, is, is a huge Luka fan. Apparently, you know, as a San Antonio Spurs fan, I did not expect my boy John Richards to be such a Luka fan. Uh, but, you well, know. Things done, things done changed. <laughs> things done changed indeed, man. Uh, the guy's. Guy's phenomenal. I got to give props, Allison. You know, nothing makes me feel better uh, uh, from if if my team can't win, I want I want your team to win, brother. So you know, thank you, brother. I, I, hey, we we sincerely appreciate that and you. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Speaking so, of basketball, uh, yeah, let's talk about it. <laughs> Speaking of basketball, let's all right. You mentioned you mentioned it earlier. Yeah, <laughs> you mentioned you mentioned it earlier. And um, so it is basketball season. Obviously, we're in, we're in the playoffs now. Yeah. And but to whet the appetite, much like in 2020, uh, but actually in 2020, it happened when we didn't have any basketball. If you if you recall, um, when we had um, when we had a little a little uh, show uh, called The Last Dance. 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. The national phenomenon that was the, the last the last dance. Um, we had a show called Winning Time on HBO. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And it just concluded its first season, and I hope it's not Ooh. its last season. Based on book uh, by Jeff Perlman. Mm-hmm. Showtime, I believe, is the name of the book. I believe. Yeah. HBO and, couldn't call the show that for obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so winning time works. Actually, winning time does work because uh, it's a it's a comp. Yeah, but whatever. Anyway, um, man. So for those who are living under a rock and uh, did not know anything about uh, winning <laughs> winning time, sorry, <laughs> that's that's not fair, I guess. But those living under a rock and did not know anything about winning time, it is a story of the rise of the Showtime Lakers. Mm-hmm. I love and it. it. And uh, season one takes us through the first season, 79 to 80. And I I remember very little about that time. I was living in Dallas, Texas with my, with my parents. My, bro- my brother was one years old. I remember my dad staying up to watch those games, but I was asleep. So I, I the first finals that I really recall watching was the 83 finals. I remember those specifically Magic winning was a big deal because my father went to Michigan State and mm-hmm. Magic went to Michigan State. Mm-hmm. I was born in Lansing, it was very this. We were very clear. Um, and in '79, there was no team called the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, in 1980, there was, but in 1979, there was not. Yeah. So, um, so it was clear that I was I was raised. Uh, as a Laker fan, yeah, and and then adopted the, the teams in in my hometown where I was raised. Yeah. Uh, having said that, the dramatization has gotten a great deal of uh, press. I stress the word dramatization again. I, I'm glad I'm glad that you use that word because <laughs> it's kind of sometimes people lose sight of that dramatization. Has got a great deal of real life events and making it more entertaining. Yes, <laughs> and it's gotten a great deal of press. Yeah. However, it is exceptionally entertaining. Yes. Not unlike, look, Adam McKay, man, brother, he's on the list. Not unlike Simon. Yeah. If Adam, if Adam McKay is doing something, you're watching Veep trusting. right now. You're watching Veep right yeah. now, Adam McKay. Yeah. If yeah. Adam, if Adam McKay is doing. S- doing something i'm trusting it yeah, so absolutely. i'm saying that's just, and i know and even before the show was recorded it was shot there was still controversy because will farrell wanted to play jerry buss and they broke they they fell out uh adam yeah. hey will farrell who brought us who brought us so many laughs and enjoyable moments and films and and ventures and you know projects yeah. and properties but that's over with. And John C. Riley ended up playing the role. And he, he and Will Ferrell supposedly aren't as chummy as they were, once were. Uh, right over- choice, though. Right choice. Perfect choice. I think, I think Ferrell would have done a fine job. But this role, I, well, I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, Winning Time on HBO, what were you expecting versus what you got? Um, I was expecting less comedy and I don't know why I was expecting less comedy, but I was, um, mm-hmm. you know, I was expecting, um, you know, having some familiarity with the, the Jeff Perlman source material, I guess I was expecting a little bit more explosive in that regard, but I think that they handled the explosive elements in a better way, in a way that was more palatable for TV. Yeah. It's like a little touch and go. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I, I, I think, you know, I thought the casting was spot on just from the outset, but I think seeing it and visualizing it and seeing people getting into the characters, for, for, uh, especially Dr. Solomon Hughes as, as, as Kareem, where, I mean, I thought that even though the cast, sometimes you can nail the casting and then people kind of mail it in, you know, but everybody, Adrian Brody, um, 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 Norm Nixon Jr., Mm-hmm. They all brought a uh, 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 Quincy uh, Isaiah. Quincy Isaiah. Yeah. 
just nailed it. Uh, J- uh, Jason, uh, Jason Siegel. Yeah. You know, I mean, and, and they, they take these characters that, you know, you, you, we know Pat Riley, we know Matthew mm-hmm. Johnson, you know what I mean? But they make them like, so that you know them. And, and I think the biggest one, man, uh, that made me appreciate and, and realize how unsung he was. And you already know who I'm about to say. Yeah. I feel like Wood Harris as, as, as Spencer mm. Haywood. Just mm. incredible. Hand um, him the Emmy. Hand him the Emmy now. Yes, man. Please. Like, I, I, mean, I mean, it's going to be rough. Yeah. And somebody's going to get snubbed and cut out and all that. It's going to be yeah. rough. Yeah. But, but if he doesn't, independent spirit, I, I, whatever it is, they need well, so they, TV. TV does a great thing wherein, you know, if it's a limited series versus, uh, uh, you know. True, but uh, this was a series. This was 10. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, like, let's say that they throw uh, We Own the City, for instance, in the limited series section. They will, because it's six episodes. Right. Then, no, but that's what Simon will, that's what he'll. Yeah. Uh, so then, 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 you know, then Wood will essentially be competing against, you know, Quincy Isaiah or, you know. Oh, he's going to be uh, co- Quit as a Jason Clark. He's gonna be putting everybody in the show. Yeah, but I think he. I mean, but to your point, Joe, I think that that Wood was heads and shoulders above everybody else, both from an acting yeah, standpoint. Me, so remember, John I mean, C. you know, John C. Riley is incredible. I, I get, you know, but Wood Harris, man, I'm telling you, like he, there are moments, and Wood, it's hard for Wood Harris to not be Wood Harris. It's hard for him, like when I see him, I'm thinking, you know, what I mean, like, uh, uh, uh. uh my man, uh, Ace Boogie, I'm thinking like, you know what I mean? I'm thinking Avon, like there are moments in, in, in when he's Spencer Haywood, particularly when he's in the, thro- the throes of, 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 of cocaine abuse, where this is Spencer Haywood. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, don't, I don't see, I don't even hear Wood Harris. I don't, you know, I don't, like, you know, I love BMF. I don't know if you watch BMF or not, uh, but he mailed in that performance. You know what I mean? Like that's, 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 that's a, a a Detroit Avon Barksdale, you know what I mean? This Got was it. Wood Harris acting his ass off, okay. and you know what I mean? Like I just I I think that that when it comes down to it, out of a star-studded cast, out of some names, out of some really truly transcendent performances, mm-hmm. I, I I you know I mean like full stop. John C. Riley as Dr. Jerry Buss, you know he also acted his ass off. He was you know I mean. There's nothing, you know, uh, as I mentioned on, on your webpage or on your, I say webpage, like how old am I? Uh, <laughs> on your Facebook page, man. Uh, Solomon Hughes is a revelation, uh, revelation as, 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 as uh, Kareem. He, he really, was, like, he was, he, 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 he played the hell out of Kareem in terms of, I got the seriousness, I got the gruffness, I got the, 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 the stoicism, the, uh, the vulnerability, all of that, you know, but, Wood Harris as 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 uh, Spencer Haywood was like you didn't see that story coming even if you knew that story which I didn't know the story I I knew the name and it's funny because I remember reading Ebony magazine as a child and seeing something about Iman married to a pro basketball player uh-huh. but I didn't know who Spencer Haywood was and so and this was like eighty two or eighty three she was still married to him. They, they were married for a while, like eight years, like seven, eight years. Yeah. And this was all throughout his, this stage of addiction. Yeah. Um, I, I, I gotta give it to, I mean, Wood Harris was just, the fact that he's not in this poster, I, I get it. Yeah. Um, and he was an addition later on the team and all that kind of stuff. I get it. Yeah. But, but um, he well, not later on the team. He was there from the from the from the from the jump, but but, but from the, like how they introduced it on the show, he was he right, was, right. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. He found some place inside, and he really he just went there, bro. What was and, what was your favorite moment of his in the show? Um. Well, the speech. Okay. Uh, when it's just two black men yeah. in a locker room. Yeah. And you know, I, I just want to say this too. The simplicity, the utter simplicity of the of the great Western form. <laughs> the great Western form. That's right. The simplicity 
of that time period. Yeah. Like 25, 30 people worked for the Lakers. Yeah. They weren't it's in concession. It was a family organization. All it was. The rest of it was like people who work for the forum. I, I just, I was just blown away though in that scene. It's just the two of them. He tells the story. Um, he tells that story and we've seen the flashbacks. Now it makes sense in a very Game of Thrones way. Yeah. Uh, we see a flashback or you see some esoteric thing and then you never understand it until you do. Um, R, and R plus L equals J. Um, <laughs> a tower of joy. How many shows? Every time they show us a tower, like how many times? Yeah. Still mad at Ben Waffen Weiss on that one. But, but, um, yeah. but. The horse drawing. <laughs> all that. Just all, everything. Uh, I'm sorry. Back to this. I love the scene. I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was two black men um, speaking their minds to each other. Yeah. Two, um, one free black man and one man who I think mentally was free, but he, he, there was something he couldn't beat. And yeah. when it's on your back, it's on your back. Yeah. And he, um, and he, he, you know, it was what it was. And so, but then in the end, Solomon as Kareem was like, no, nah, it was me. And yeah. yet the largesse of Kareem and Spencer, despite his anger at Kareem, he had so much respect and love, though, in my mind, for yeah. Kareem that he yeah. couldn't even, he wanted to hit Kareem. Yeah. But he couldn't. And he might have been able to get Kareem. Yeah, but he couldn't. But he couldn't. Yeah. And that was that. Yeah. And so... I, I for me, it was the moment when, uh, you know, he's at this point, he's off the team and everything like that. And, you know, they're plotting, like, you know, when are we going to kill the Lakers? Guys? Yeah, to kill them, to kill the Lakers. You know what I mean? And then uh, he finds out Kareem is injured. He's like, oh, they're going to call me. No, it's off now. Yeah. <laughs> Which is always, you know, I mean, he's out of his mind. Oh, so, yeah. so the delirium piece. Yeah. Is, a, is another big piece, I think, with that, uh, yeah. that is probably <laughs> underrated and understated. Exactly. exactly. The delirium that one would go through in a, in a, in a crack and cocaine infused state. Um, I, I love this. I love this whole thing. I yeah. thought John C. Riley was just from the, from the first scene to the last scene, I thought John C. Riley gave it his all. If yeah. he's got a life's if he was born for a reason, it was to play Jerry Buss yeah. at least in one season. And it's interesting. We talked about it. The way they spoke, I think this show is just, it's too hot for TV. Yeah. And the way they spoke about things, kind of like Playmakers on ESPN. Yeah. The way yeah. they spoke about things, you know, in LA, some things are religion. In the City of Angels. There's some things that are religion. <laughs> and one of them is the Los, is Angeles. the Los Angeles Lakers. For sure. And, and even in the entertainment business, the relationship between the entertainment business yeah. and the Los Angeles Lakers has been cemented since 1979. Yeah. 80. And yeah. it's probably for the best. Yeah. If yeah. they just don't keep it going. But I hate that. The same way I hated there was no lo second Lovecraft. The way I hated there was no additional luck. Uh, the way I hated that, um, uh, and those 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 were for whatever reasons. Or how to make it in America didn't go three seasons. Maybe it was yeah. probably time, but yeah. but but um, no second season of Watchmen. Like, well, I didn't even watch that, so I, I'll I'll go back later. Nah, I, I'm just not, you know, I'm not into that. Uh, it's not me. So I'm just not into that. So, uh, but I agree with you. Sure. No second season of Watchmen. I'm, that's on the list. There are so many shows on that, on that list. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, but this one. Yeah. Is political in different ways. And, and I haven't heard anything from magic, but, but well, you, you know, he had that competing, like he had that. that yeah, that. I know. And, and looking at him, he's probably like, well, I got this going on, but yeah. I mean, Irvin, you know, hey, it's you, baby. Irvin was Irvin, man. You it's Irvin's Irvin, man. It's you, baby. Yeah. Um, Larry Bird hasn't said a word. 
Ooh, to my house. They did Bert. I mean, like, and you know, Jerry West's man, they did Bert dirty. Yeah, they did. But it was written from like Perlman's perspective. Sure. And 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 look, if I have my druthers, sure you make this one. And you know what I want next. Yeah. I want boys. I want boys. We'll be boys, baby. Oh, <laughs> I want it, but I want Jerry. We'll see no, the playmaker, huh? <laughs> want to see the playmaker? I do. I don't know who would play him. <laughs> I have no idea who would play him. Lucy who's, Stanfield. Who's pl- nah? Who's playing? Uh, no, 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 no. And who who's playing Emmett? You know, actually, know who could play Emmett is the guy who played Easy. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And then who's playing Aikman? I don't, I don't know who plays Aikman, but but um, and who plays Jimmy? Actually, you know who could play Jimmy is um, Clark. Yeah, yeah. He yeah, could play Jimmy. Clark can do that definitely. The the most important role is probably to cast is probably Jerry, and um, that's the that's the problem. Yeah. How do you how do you do that? How do you do that? I don't know. I don't know who that would be. I don't either. Um. I have no idea. Dana Carvey. <laughs> Maybe it is. Hey, you know what's crazy? Maybe it is Dana Carvey. <laughs> hey. You're laughing. Maybe it is Dana Carvey. I don't know. Could be. Could I don't be. know. But you yeah. gotta get you gotta get a believable Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you do that, Jack. And I'm talking like 89. Yeah. And that I think that's one of the cool things about this show, too. We we our whole lives. You just say, oh, he got drafted. He's, you know, plays on a team. He played center the night they won. You know those things. We know those things. <sighs> However, before he was drafted, they didn't want him, right? Yeah. West didn't want him. Yeah. You could, you could read of that however you want to. And then even, even when he was out there, there's still space between, you know, he and his dad are visiting and the draft. So yeah. We don't know what's gonna. We know he's gonna draft it, but if you're watching the show and you don't know any better, like, oh, how's it gonna happen? You know, and then the the bird magic thing starts from magic birds. Let me say it correctly. Thing starts from the beginning, and you know, yeah. And I'm glad you made that correction, Joe, because Magic's had the upper hand the entire time. They tell this narrative as if Bird actually dominated at any point in time, and he didn't. Well, they, the catch was that. When they finally met up, he beat him the first time. The first one. Yes. But the then. got him th- two to one. He did. But he beat him the first time. Yeah. And if I, if, I, if I have my druthers, we get through. We get a, we get an Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. I need to see you lose. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't recall. I need to look it up. I don't recall how Houston made it to the 81 finals. I'm guessing they went through L.A. Yeah, they did. Much like they did in '86, and '86 was on a bounce ball that yeah. fell. So '81 was Moses Malone in Houston, though. Yeah, in Houston. Right. Yeah. Okay. Moses. Moses had but by '83. Moses he was MVP was, that year. But, but okay, then by '83, and then he was MVP again in '83. That's somebody they don't talk enough about, right? By the way, because he didn't Moses because he didn't go to college. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Same thing with Spencer Hayward. I mean, well, you know, I mean, it's he different did, time. but he, Susan Haywood was just like out of, he, he, he's like Kurt Flood. Yeah. I mean, he's just this amazing being, but then like this, this, this down conscious guy. Yeah. He pulled him on. Yeah. Pulled him on. Like, had like pulled three kids like, with him on, two or three <laughs> kids with him on. Yeah. <laughs> and he's on like the Showtime Lakers, bro. Like yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. Pre worthy. <laughs> hey, look, Jamal Wilkes. That if I have one nitpick, I mean I know they couldn't focus on everybody. Silk. Silk didn't get his his love. I mean, they, they got Coop love. Coop, Coop. Coop got a lot of love. Coop but Coop love. is part of but Coop is like there for the Coop is the 10 year man. Yeah, he was the, he's he's defensive player. Like, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But like, you know, like Jamal Wilkes wasn't no, I mean, he was cornbread, man. You know what I mean? Like he was, he was, he was in Hollywood, like, like Kareem was in Hollywood. And I mean, maybe not like to the, the same level as Kareem, but he was, 
I mean, he's starring in films like he, you know, yeah. and, and he was he was he was a, a great player. Um, that looking at that team, man, uh, and then then do it again and, and to rebuild like around Byron Scott and and James Worthy, you know, like I I I'm, I want to see. I know it's not likely that we'll see up to uh, the end of, of 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 Magic, but if if somehow we could, <laughs> like if they could combine a few of those seasons, like the you know to 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 your point, to show that first the eighty four series and show you know Larry yeah, getting just hit, jump, just jump to it, and then and then to show the uh, the repeat. You know, and then bring Isaiah into it, you know. And, and so I, I guess in that vein, I also want to talk about the casting hits they got, but the worst casting they did for me was uh was Dr. J. I I I just wasn't feeling J at all. I wouldn't, you know. I, it didn't I don't seem know. believable. Yeah, he looked he like, he looked like Dr. J in 87, like the you look like Dr. J in the retirement year. Right, when he had the, the rocking chair in Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. He didn't look at, he, he looked he like Dr. J in the greatest NBA video ever made, NBA Superstar. Oh, with the music, uh, the, the song. He was, he was the greatest love of all. His song yeah. was the greatest love of all. Yeah. He you, looked like that. You hit me to that. You hit me to that. Brother. You hit NBA me to that. NBA Superstars. Yeah. And uh, uh, Dominique was a song by Yanni. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then it builds up and it starts with a dunk and then it goes again with another dunk and another yeah. dunk and another dunk. But sorry, uh, I'm getting off topic. But uh, hey, that's a you need to uh, your assignment. You've never seen that, that NBA it's superstars not, video. YouTube you NBA see. superstars. Not it's on YouTube. Two or three or four. Number one NBA yeah. super NBA superstars. Yes. Yeah. And it nobody opens marketed with, their stars like the NBA did. And it opens with whom? My main man. Magic, of course. Magic. The magic man. With the song Control. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes. So. How fitting. Yes. Yes, indeed. Um, if you're not watching it, you need to. Uh, also, let me, real quick. Genie Bus character. Great. Uh, um, uh, Jesse Bus, I think, is, is his mother. Uh, Jerry yeah, Bus. Sally Field. Yeah. yeah. Sally Field. Of course, she's outstanding. I mean, when you're dying the whole time, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. But yeah, outstanding. Yeah, uh, Hoffman. She's grown up. Like, can't believe Abby it. Hoffman, man. Talk about it. Can't believe she's grown up um, the way she has. Uh, I think she, uh, but nonetheless, very strong. Yeah. And let's talk about the sister, uh, Cookie. Playing, uh, Cookie. So, Erlitha. <laughs> yes, Erlitha. Um, I love that we're we're normalizing these black people being in college. Yeah. Um, and that Magic's mom was like, no, you need to go back to school. Like, if, if it don't work out, go back. You need to go back and finish your degree. Like, she's saying that. And I love that they said it. I also love that Early is there the whole time. Cookie's yeah. there the whole time. Yeah. Cookie's, you know, that it's 79. They didn't get married till 1991. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 12. After the diagnosis. I'm sorry. After the diagnosis. Yes. 12 long years. Yep. No, he got married earlier that year. Ah, that's right. That's right. That's he right. got married earlier that year. That's right. Uh, that's right. Um, twelve long years between seventy nine and ninety one. I'm just gonna say that. Ooh, magic, man! I can't imagine how rough or tough that was um, for both of them. But, but, uh, well, I'm sure it wasn't too tough for Magic. But uh, <laughs> how rough or tough it was for both of them. And Magic's my favorite player of all time. So, so I say that with nothing but reverence and love. Yeah. Um, but we're not talking about basketball right now. So, so um, having said all that, I, I really love the the women, um, the portrayals of, of these very strong women yeah. in, the, in this in this series. And I, it is my hope. I truly hope we get two, three, four more seasons. And to your point, the way you said it, I hope we can flash ahead to 84. Let's see a loss. Then flash ahead to 88. And then yeah. that bullshit. I know why you want to see. <laughs> well, it would it would just be like a second, but Mark Aguirre would be there. Yeah. Mark Aguirre was a was a, you know, they were gonna yeah, trade, awesome. they were gonna trade 
somebody for Aguirre. Bus wanted Aguirre because Magic wanted Aguirre. Yeah. On the yeah. team. And um Rolando and, Blackman. And where did he go? He went to Detroit instead. He went to Z. Yeah. But they were both trying to get him. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's never talked about. Fifth, sixth scoring every year. Never talked about. He probably won't make the Hall of Fame. That's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I don't even think his number is retired in Dallas. I'm almost positive it's not, which is crazy. Two foe, baby. Number two foe. But uh, but anyway, could shoot the J. Uh, but but nonetheless. <laughs> But I thought we were going to get the baseline for a second, man. Hey. Winning time. Winning yeah. time. Oh, oh, young young brother Nixon. Um, yeah, talk Nixon, about it. Debbie Allen's son. I thought he was great. And, yeah. You know, it's tough having to play your dad. Yeah. I can only imagine. And I, and, and particularly when he played, I mean, like in LA, they know it, but like the rest of the world doesn't know. Like, no, no, no. Norm Nixon was the man, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, for real. And, and, and he pulled Debbie Allen. Like, yeah, Debbie Allen. Right. Yeah. So, so um, I really love the way he played it as a. I'm gonna show you LA. I'm gonna get you together, country. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do all these things. Yeah, get together, show you LA, and then realized, okay, this guy here, he got some. Yeah, it's another level. He has another level, and we need to work together to to make this work. So, I yeah. appreciate that as well. Yeah. So I love winning time. Candle I, award I'm, winning Norm Nixon. Yes, yes, Candle Award. <laughs> yes, Candle Award winning Norm Nixon. Yes, Making George's own. Yes, make state champ. He was a state champ. South I West. learned that at Candle. I learned that Candle Weekend, I guess, it was 19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Joe, uh, we back, man. Um. <laughs> I don't know what that is. We be, we, I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know. I, I was watching so, the shaft earlier. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, yeah. We uh we got some guests that you know are, are chomping at the bit. Come on board with us. Uh, uh a couple weeks from now, you know. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. Is that where we're going next? Yeah, let's do it. All right. awesome. If you don't know, if you don't know, then then you know. Sorry. Shame on you. <laughs> Empire Sorry. Strikes Back, baby. Hey. I said it two or three times in this episode. In this episode. Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> yeah. We're doing nothing it. else. He gave us probably one of the greatest songs of all time in the Imperial March. Yes. Yes. It was not. Thank you. We. I can't wait to to talk about that and sure. and, and uh, you know uh, talk about how how cold it must have been to want to uh, live inside the guts of a uh, a wampa, but you know there it is. So. Yeah. So next week, y'all, we're gonna do Empire Strikes Back, and uh, you know, um, the Open Tabs podcast is back, and we're, we're we're so happy. Thank you guys for listening, watching, whatever, however you're consuming your media. Um, you know, we're on Apple, we're on uh, Anchor, we're on Spotify. That's my preferred medium, is Spotify. A one and a half time speed. You know, doing some laundry, driving, whatever the case is. Um, you know, uh, subscribe, like, you know, interact with us. Let us know that you you're there. Uh, I, I ran into some random people at work like, yo, you know, I've listened to your podcast. I was like, oh, really? Well, thank you. So, <laughs> you know, uh, and, yes, and, and, please continue to do so. <laughs> thank you. A lot, a lot of, a lot of love for Joe and his singing, man. So, you know. Oh, well, I'm glad I didn't do any of it today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. A little Yanni, you, you know. <laughs> uh, I did, I did do it. I guess I did it. <laughs> Instrumental of Yanni. Thank you. Thanks for that reminder, by the way. Yeah. Anyway, yo, uh, until next time, we, we are the Open Dad Podcast, and uh, we'll see y'all. Thank y'all for listening. Hi, right, brother.